The Mind's Demonology of Spiritual Parasites. This podcast is a reference of Bazzi Francis Encyclopedic Discoveries. What are spiritual parasites? Spiritual parasites are demonic entities that possess the human vessel to control their bodies and minds. They make decisions and inflate the thought process of mankind, therefore making them compromise their way of living by constantly feeding the flesh with obsessive and compulsive cravings. One of the most significant factors of spiritual parasites possessing the human vessel is through sex and gluttony. These parasites also feed on our sexual or sensual energies. They also feed on sweet cravings such as overeating or overdrinking. Also people with sexual addictions or any other addiction of the flesh. Anything to quench the taste and desire of the flesh at most. I submit to you that wisdom is given to no man unless he asks for it. The human vessel functionality is based on two preferences, namely, the holy possession and the demonic possession. Whichever you choose, your vessel can be possessed with any of these spirits to either do the work of the father of that of the devil. This endless cycle of demonic possession keeps its victims in a loop, and oftentimes these possessions unbeknownst to the victim. Some indulge in ignorance, calling it bliss, whereas other take the necessary steps needed to severe ties with these spirits. The sensory experiences of what we call fun by the means of sexual perversion is only the beginning to one's internal destruction. The jobs of spirits are to inflate and exhibit certain actions from the spiritual to the physical. Just as the Holy Spirit can come upon a man therefore making him function in a supernatural way, a demon can also do the same but in a destructive and manipulative way. They speak through us, they act through us. They also feed through us. The reason why someone who's a sexual slave or worker, who's ignorant to change and never sees anything wrong with their way of life, is simply because they have been body snatched by these entities. They've created this close bond and fed it for so long that such demon never wants to leave them. This is the reason for spiritual spouses, etc. Again, such individual can be aware of these spiritual problems, or sometimes they might not be aware of it. Why many youths and adults suffer so well from spiritual spouses is based on the vulnerability of the vessel. We ignorantly open of doors for these beings to come into our vessels when we feed into low vibrational thoughts and actions. A very common means is through pornography, masturbation, or sexual intercourse with someone who's housing a demon in their bodies. These parasites move from one vessel to another. Doesn't matter if you're having a protected sex or not. It is a spiritual thing a non-physical phenomenon that occurs during these actions. If I am to explain how God showed me a vision of our spiritual bodies, I believe you'd be amazed. God showed and told me that our spiritual bodies exist with no clothing. Remember the story of Adam and Eve when God created them? They weren't aware that they were naked until they ate the forbidden fruits. That is the same way we exist on the metaphysical or spiritual plane. That is why the Bible tells us that God sees the inward part of our being so much that we can't hide anything from Him. Our souls are just as naked as we think. But something struck my attention when God showed me what's beneath our legs. Something like a burning gemstone that's shining so bright. Now, God showed me a generation that many youths and adults, including children that theirs have been completely put off, whereas others as not shining as bright as it's meant to. Then he showed me another picture of someone whose gemstone is shining so bright and there's these dark forces that are trying to steal it. The way he showed me this vision, it was like these dark beings are thirsty or hungry to have a taste of that gemstone. Then he told me that the power and essence of our life force is the main target from the kingdom of hell. The devil wants to accumulate as many gemstone that he could get because he knows that is where our power and strength lies. As for those who theirs has been stolen... They're weak, and they cannot even move their bodies. God said that the enemy's target of accumulating souls to hell is only possible if he keeps as many individuals bound to sex and lust, to a point that it becomes a means of soul winning to the kingdom of darkness. The devil's master plan tactics for this generation is through the means of sexual pleasures. That is the only way he thinks he can depopulate the kingdom of God in order to increase the kingdom of darkness. The Lord said to me clearly, He said, Go and tell my people that I can restore what the enemy might have stolen only if they surrender and come to me. He said he will wash us clean and his mercy and unconditional love is sufficient for him to forgive us our sins. He said, but they must do it wholeheartedly. One must admit their wrongdoings and take responsibility for their actions. The truth is that by default, everyone has and enjoy the grace of God as a benefit. 
But what we really don't know is the fact that many people who constantly dwell and has taken refuge in their sins, at some point fall from grace. People fall from grace. Anyone can fall from grace. But even if we fall, we must seek the face of God. Matter of fact, we shouldn't wait until we fall from grace before we could come to God. The sad truth is, our lives is not in our hands, but in the hands of the Creator. Our tomorrow is not really guaranteed unless He says so. Any moment from now, we'd be out of our mortal bodies where our soul will be standing naked in the presence of God. Now ask yourself, what will be your fate? I know for sure that there is a helping hand that assisted me with my sexual addiction in the past, and that is no other person than Christ Jesus. God listens to our hearts and not words. That is why he said he knows the contents and desires of our hearts, even before we come to him. He knows us too well that he can literally count every string of the hair on our heads. But here is the truth. We must come to God wholeheartedly, and our prayer must be an honest conversation between you and God. This isn't any kind of conversation. It's way too deep to be explained with mere words. We have to create a radical trust that must be established between you and God. Our prayers must be heartfelt as we speak honestly and genuinely to God. But we must do this humbly and submissively. The degree which we make ourselves present to God in the same way God also makes himself present to us. It's a mutual thing of a mirrored reflection, cause and effect, or the law of correspondence. We should understand that God doesn't want us, but he needs us. In the same way, he made it a thing of choice for us to reciprocate the same desire. Can you image the level of humility that is? Even with his supernatural powers and abilities, he can do anything he wants or create anything he wants. Yet he created us and gave us the freedom of choice to do love him and draw closer to him. This analogy that I'm about to give to you will blow your mind. Do you know that God runs errands for us? When we ask him for something, he goes extra mile to bring that one thing to us. Where on earth have can we see a king who runs errands even to a commoner or a regular palace worker? Rather, what we experience is the other way around. Where people like you and I run errands for kings and queens, even the presidents, governors, leaders, pastors, mentors, etc., we are subjected to serve, but in the kingdom of God, it is different. He is different. He is the true definition of humility, love, kindness, patience, etc. God is everything to me, and sometimes his love overwhelms me to a point that I begin to cry. I love him so much that I really want to be with him someday in heaven. I say that to him every day. The world is wicked. The world is evil. But that shouldn't scare us a bit. Rather, we have to be more confident because we have God, and we shouldn't be afraid of what the world can do to us. The Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Think about that. I want you to also meet this wonderful person that I'm talking about. I hope to see you in heaven someday, my dear reader. I hope you genuinely make it right with God this time. My name is Bazzy Francis, and thank you for listening. I'm sending you so much love and light. Goodbye for now.